Carlo Tresco was an Italian uh, anarchist. He caused a lot of problems for for Mussolini. He was tossed out of the country, but he was a, a a loud spoken critic of not only of Mussolini, fascism in general, Stalin, communism, and this is the important part: the mafia in Italy. My theory is that's why he was killed. He just wouldn't drop it, and the uh, mafia in Italy got contact with the mafia here, and they killed him. He was running this newspaper called El Martello, which was popular, it was Italian language, but was popular in the Italian ghettos all over the United States. So he had some clout with him. Oddly enough, he had known Mussolini since 1904. They were in this short-lived uh, leftist group together, like a sort of a socialist group together. So he's chased out of Italy and he goes to New York. Here's the story. Vito Genovese had been a sponsor of, of uh, Mussolini early on. He was, you know, covering his bets and he had given money to the campaigns, to Mussolini's campaigns. He was close to Mussolini's son-in-law. Um, so anyway, I think that Genovese may have heard that, uh, that uh, Tresca was a problem and he had to go and maybe to ingrate himself. With Mussolini, again, I'm not buying into it. So he cause he tells Mike Moran and Tony Bender, get rid of this guy, Tresca. Take him out. So they hand the job over to this young guy who at that time was a nobody, Carmen Galente, who would become one of the biggest dope dealers in the world in the 70s. And eventually boss of the Bonanno crime family. So on January 11th, 1943, Tresca is walking on 5th Avenue, 15th Street with his friend, a guy named, uh, is an attorney actually, Calabi who was also in exile. They crossed 15th Street and waiting, it was darker because there was a wartime lights out thing. They spot a guy, it's Galente, on the corner. Two stories is he was waiting for them on the corner, he followed them on foot. Another story is a sedan pulled up, he leaped, Galente leaped out of the sedan, waited on the corner and they walked right up to him. When they were just a few feet away, Galente pulls out a thirty-eight from his coat pocket and bang, shoots Tresca in the right cheek that goes through his skull, and the other one hits him in the back and then goes to the lung. Tresca died. He fell dead in the gutter. Calabri, the attorney and everyone else, they unfortunately, they record the license plate number, 1C9272. The law tracks it back down to... Galente, Galente had just gotten out of prison uh, about two hours before the killing, believe it or not, and he was on parole. He had to go in and see his parole officer. And the parole officer noticed that when he left, he got in a car, wrote down the license plate number. What they were trying to do is see if he was hanging around with known felons, if he was, you know, the, he'd go back to prison. So they pick him up. And Galente denies everything, of course. He said he didn't know nothing about no car. He, yes, he was downtown. He admitted that. But he got there by subway. Uh, he went to see a Broadway play. Police kept him under surveillance under phone tap for about two more years, thinking, well, maybe he'll slip up. Uh, but he never did. And again, I, I, my theory is they just needed to shut this guy up. He was causing a lot of problems. Don't forget... Later on in the 40s, the Italians controlled, the, the mafia controlled the Italian population, largely immigrant population, on the waterfronts in New Jersey, New York. And they had them by the throats. And other anarchist communists would step forward, and they were killed by the mafia. So I, I think that's probably more likely. He was a threat to their stronghold. That's all. I don't think it had anything to do with most.